All right, do you have your stuffs loaded? Good. Here's all your work. Now, do not unsubmit them, but you should be able to, I think if I, I think I have to update it here. You should be able to, unless you just turn it in, and in which case, all I have to do is this, that, wait for it, that, boom. If you submitted it before, like after, like during Hive, you might have to refresh it, but you should be able to type on it and it'll add like whatever you type as a suggestion. That way, because it tells me what time you turned it in, right? Because I said I'm not taking it late. So I can see if you have it turned in already, but I still want you to correct any of your mistakes. You see what I'm saying? Also, if maybe you forgot to turn it in already, just go ahead and type in all the answers and maybe I'll give you one out of two points. You're welcome. It's better than zero out of two, isn't it? Speaking of homework that I'm not taking late, look what we have here. Five mechanisms of evolution. Yesterday, you learned about one of them. We're gonna talk more about it today. And then the video is to tell you about the other four and a little bit more about number one. For this one, there are focus questions to answer. You will also need to get a piece of paper, draw the hand. It's a nice analogy because the hand has five fingers and there's five, you see, you see how this works? You don't, you don't. Then they would draw their six fingered hand and then one of them is bonus finger, bonus finger. I knew, I knew a guy with six fingers. You did? Yes. Did they tell lies? He's a six-fingered man. No, and he did not kill my father either. Okay. <laughs> That's a big joke. I That's like a that Princess joke. Bride joke. Don't worry. No one has killed my father. He's still like alive. That. But yeah, it's a good analogy. And which finger it's on also sort of helps you remember what that mechanism does. So not only is it a good way to count, but there's also like the, the fingers matter. Either way, today... We're gonna talk about the questions. Now, as I said, we are gonna talk about, try my best here not to just give you answers. I want you guys to talk about them. We'll come to like a group consensus, like we did with the seven characteristics. If I feel like we're getting led astray, then I might, I might curve us back, but we'll see. So first and foremost, the hardest question, I think. Mostly just cause we're a little rusty. Tell me, independent and dependent variable of the stick bug lab. I recommend we start with the dependent variable. That one should be much easier. Remember, the independent variable should be affecting the dependent variable. So let's start with the dependent variable. What do you think was affected? Number of stick bugs, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, population. Number of stick bugs, what'd you say Jude? Population, population number? Should it be number of stick bugs that survive or number of stick bugs that get eaten? Does it matter? How many total stick bugs can fit in there? Oh yeah, open up your, your data sheet and your conclusion question. If you hold the control key while you click, it'll open it in a new tab for you. Open them both, how exciting, how majestic. Look at your data, tell me, because it tells you the total number, number of bugs. You can also add it up yourself, but tell me how many bugs are there? What? 80, does that change ever? So again, I asked, does it matter if we count how many survive or how many get eaten? Yeah, I don't think it matters either. Okay. What do you think is affecting the number of stick bugs that either survive or get eaten? What is the V for? Variable. So this needs to be something that. Well, we do math independent variable. 
What what does the word variable mean? I have a variable speed transmission. What can I do with it? I can change it. It goes at different speeds. You want me to talk about it? I know all about them and like all that stuff. They're really cool. Oh, nice. Actually, I take that back. Only, no, I do have a car with a variable speed transmission. Boom, good. Yeah. The other two have the other two have no transmission because they're electric and they don't need that. Oh, you have a Tesla. Do I look like I can afford a Tesla? No, $50, only fifty. Dude, that is more money than I make. My dad. I can't be. I can't be donating a whole year's salary to one of the richest men ever for his crappily built car with giant panel gaps. Yo, there's Easter. There you can make each like almost extremely thing. Yeah. Of the seats fart. Oh boy, yeah, $50,000 fart machine. I can go to the Dollar Tree, get a whoopee cushion for a buck. You can also make a fart. So, let me uh, take this other thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, say it again. Wasn't that our dependent variable, though? Uh, what'd you put for dependent? Uh, number of cycles you produce. Oh, interesting. Isn't that isn't that just like another way of measuring how many stick bugs survive, though? Okay. So what do you think was causing the stick bugs to be eaten or survive or reproduce differently? Ooh, the color of the stick bugs. What do you guys think about that? Jackson doesn't like it. Jackson, what do you not like about it? They aren't. Did anything change with the predators, though? Oh, interesting. Ian. Didn't didn't we already say that's the same as a dependent variable, though? Is that is that going to be a different way of measuring how many stick bugs there are? So, so far, contenders are number of birds, color of bugs. What do you say, Riley? Was that different? I mean, yeah. Every time it was different? Probably. You don't, you don't start at like 20, se well, not 20 seconds, but like 10 seconds and get on to like five. Uh, you were off by like 56 nanoseconds there. <laughs> it was always 30 seconds. What? Except for ninth period. One time I let them have a whole minute, but that was that was my bad. Did it feel like it was a different amount of time each time? Yeah, it felt, no. it felt so much different. It's That's like interesting. Interesting. What do you guys think? We got number of predators. We got color of bugs. I think it's color of bugs because the brighter the color, the more easier to see. So it would affect how many they need to reach that. Oh, nice. All right. So, so you're saying you think it's the color of bugs because how bright the bug was affects how likely it is to reproduce. Okay. Well, that goes into question number two, doesn't it? Yeah, can I answer that one? Jackson. If the dependent variable is how many survive, then color of stick bugs could work. But if it's how many are reproduced, then it then color makes no sense because two red stick bugs reproduce at the same rate as two blue stick bugs. Click. Click on the number to add cell. And read read my formula. Uh, equal 
not not out loud how to come up with that how did it come up with that number basically it's reading to uh, every single part of well it's subtracting 80 by the ratio of that and then multiplying the box by that much where that ratio come from that ratio comes Dividing every single uh, box in the fourth slot, so that'll be number left. So like I'll add up every single number and then divide that by. Yeah. So it comes from the number that were left. Interesting. Interesting. So wait, I got lost. What's our independent variable? I don't Stick book. Johnny thinks it's a color stick book. Why again? Because if it's a brighter color, the predator can see it better. So it has a less light sustainability, I guess. Okay. So he says it's the color bug. If it's a brighter color, it'll be seen better, less life sustainability, because the predator is more likely to, to eat it. Do you have any evidence to back that up? Um, the data shows that the... Uh, for um, round one from Mike's group, had, he had six red bugs and zero tans. So the red was easier to see than the tans. Nice. Say that one more time. You had zero. We had zero tan uh, stick bugs and six red stick bugs. So you had zero eat, eaten or zero surviving? Uh, zero eaten. Zero eaten, and you had six red? Six red eaten. What about green and yellow? Uh, one yellow. Four green. One yellow, four green. Interesting. So could you say the color of stick bug affects the number of stick bugs who get eaten? Yeah, sounds about right. Oh, interesting. Interesting. He's doing the right thing. If he uses that one, it's a conduct point. Now, tell me the youth. Which color was hardest to eat? Which color was hardest to eat? John said tan. Green. Green. You thought the green one was the hardest to eat? Yeah. I think the yellow one was hardest to eat? Yeah. Why? Yeah, the tan ones are easier to grab if they're closer. It's going to be harder to grab. This is another variable we have to add. How do you grab them if you can't see them? Magic. Yeah. Abby, what do you think? Well, we are the Yeah, weren't you guys on a mission to like kill off all the tan though or something? Yeah, right. <laughs> like go out of your way to be like oh i see what he's doing here and i'm gonna wreck it i'm like wreck it ralph and just get in there what now patterson carefully crafted lab with formulas and stuff we'll never overcome the orneriness of teenagers what do you think uh brady i heard you talking back there oh great well you're talking now what color do you think was hardest All right, well, uh, walk me through. Give me the whole, give me claim, evidence, or reasoning. Well, what I said was my claim was that yellow and tan were the hardest to eat off of because they were the most camouflaged. Hey, what, why are you talking? Say, say, say it again. Yellow and tan because? They were greatly more camouflaged with the rest of the sticks while the red and the green stood out a lot more, so they were easier to see. Okay, so what did, what did you just give me? At a claim evidence reasoning, he gave me a claim. Yeah, he gave me claim and reasoning. What evidence did he give me, Griffin? Well, he was, uh, all the evidence he was talking about was like how many colors of each bunch of tan stuff we got. Did he tell me that, though? No. No. 
So we still need some evidence. So Brady, hit me with some evidence. All right, did that continue for the rest of the rounds? Yes. In the second round, we only got six tan, and then we had seven red, and only six green that round, though. So we're actually more focused on the tan. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Let me ask you guys this which would be easier to say how many got eaten overall or to say how many survived overall? Why would that be easier? Because this still alive, we're going to do math. Because, yeah, there's always, well, and also, it, it doesn't, the spreadsheet tell you how many. Look at the very last round. Look at the number to start. That gives you your final number. How many do we have at, each, at the beginning? How many of each color? 20. 20 of each at the beginning. How many do you have at the end, Brady? In total? Yeah. That, sorry, how many of each color do you have at the end? 49, 27, 40, 0. Oh, so that's not, sounds like tan and yellow were a lot harder. You say, say, say those numbers one more time. 49, 27, 4, and 0. So if you had to pick one, you said 49, tan, 27, yeah. yellow, what, four red, and who cares green? Sounds right. If you had to pick one that was hardest, you would say because? And how do you know tan was the hardest for your group? Because we didn't eat as much, but also at the very beginning, we had a lot less eaten, but as the rounds progressed, we were able to get some eat. How many did you have at the end? How many tan at the end? For Brady. At the end, we had 49. Is that more or less or the same as anybody else? That is way more than Way more. I mean, it's over half, right? You only have 80 total. You got 49 tan at the end. You see, you see what I'm saying here? Yes, no, maybe. I mean, I'm not really saying much. You see what Brady's saying here, though? You see what I'm pushing you guys towards? Can I say something that was from our group? Yeah. But it's not hunted up. Yeah, group group hunter. Great. We ended up with only one tan left. Of course you did, you monsters. <laughs> How many yellow, red, and green? Uh, 32 yellow, uh, 29 red, and 18 green. Oh, so it still seems like green were pretty easy to get. In fact, even with you guys going out of your way to not eat them, you still had fewer than you started with. That's interesting. That's interesting. So other than team purposefully defiant, what E word that I've already written in this exact spot of the board is how we want to make decisions in science. Evidence. Evidence. It can be really easy, like Brady even said, like he thought it was one way, but his, his data said something else, right? You were saying something like that, Brady? You can feel like whatever you feel. And even for like you personally, maybe you personally, it was easier to see the tan ones than maybe the yellow ones. Normally when I do this lab, I do it with the lights out. So those yellow ones are like invisible ghosts. Like they're, they're impossible. Like no, I've only ever seen one kid like effectively kill the yellow. And also I have a built-in safeguard against team oppositional defiance where I assign you each a color and then every round you have to trade and you're only allowed to eat that color. It's like everybody has to go after the green one time and everybody has to like struggle to find the tan and the yellow one time. It makes it, it's, it's pretty fun. But, you know, I wanted to make sure that we just ran through more rounds. But, yeah, you can feel like whatever feelings. But in science, we decide, remember, your hypothesis is an explanation of how the independent variable affects the dependent variable. Your experiment is a question, though. Your experiment is like that snotty, like, dumb kid on Reddit. You know which one I'm talking about. It's like, you know, is it really? Yeah, where's your evidence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then they just drag you into a long, overwhelming debate where you have to be like, yes, here are my sources. And they're like, you know, that one time this one guy, like, he wears pants upside down, so I don't like him anymore. And, yeah. You sound like Billy. <laughs> but either way, what I do like about Reddit is it forces people to not just, like, use their words. Because if you just use your words, then other people just come and like, yeah, I can't, yeah, 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 yeah. You have to actually have it developed argument based on evidence. 
<laughs> you take nothing else away from your science education here at Mount Vernon. This, I mean, this has got to be it. The, the fact that scientists have to use evidence to make their decisions, to decide how this works, to figure out what's going on. We have to use evidence. We can't like see it, smell it, measure it in some way. We can't, we can't even talk about it in science. We take nothing else away from that because I know like some of you aren't going to be science majors. Some of you will, and that's going to be sweet. So it'll be something else that's also going to be sweet. But most importantly, I need you to understand as like people who will be legally allowed to vote one day, I need you to understand that science and scientific discoveries and scientific decisions are based on evidence, not feelings. This is based on feelings would be in. It'd be in the advice. Well, it'd, it'd be Reddit. It'd be Reddit. <laughs> Sabina. <laughs> Uh, you should be able to just type right on it. Give, it. give it a refresh and then you should be able to just type right on it. That's so cool. Yeah, it's still because I'm suggesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that, it'll show me those. Okay. Yeah. And you'll be able to see them forever too. And it'll be a different color. So you can see like, if you see more like colorful text around one area, you can be like, oh, here's something that I was thinking this way. And now I'm seeing this this way. Okay. Make sure, oh, well, number three. And make sure we got numbers here, numbers, number three. Which stick bug was easiest, do you think? Carly, which stick bug do you think was easiest to eat? What color? Well, for me, I think green. She thought green was pretty easy to eat. Who agrees, green? Whose data agrees, green? All right, give me some numbers, Jackson, back it up. Mm-hmm. Now we'll add them up. How fun! You said red, red was what, and green was okay. Oh man, but now we gotta add up how many tan yellow. Gotta, just tell me the final numbers. I don't wanna add it all. I decided no, against it. Then you, can still take it. you add it all. Six and six. Who had six? Oh, the red. The red? So you, you thought red were a little easier? The data says red. But green's still pretty easy, yeah? Why do you guys think that is? I need some reasoning. Why is the green and probably the red? Why are the, why were they so easy to eat? Oh, interesting. So they, they see you see them. You say you see them better, so they're easier to eat. Those because they're brighter. I say uh, yellow is better. Better or easier? Well, it's easier. It's easier. Mm -hmm. What's your data say? Uh, we had. One, two, seven. No, no, get, get, you got to give me totals here. Eighty. You had eighty yellow at the end. What? It didn't like. It's in front of no that. It didn't add up for all. Of right here. How many? That's round six. Though. Yeah, that's your last round, isn't it? No, we round five was the last one we did. Yeah, so starting round six, this is your final count. Who do you have the most of? Well, red, right, I guess. Interesting. So you found red to be hardest to eat? Yeah. Or, or were you guys just being like a team kill the tan? No, we, we, we were being team <laughs> kill the tan practically. Not really. So what you're saying is I should always use the cards. 
What cards? Uh, no, we weren't really like that, though. I mean, but if you saw me, I got a lot of plants. Yeah, and then, yeah, you, yeah. Puke it up like a big, gross, big, gross puke mess of bird. Hey, if you eat all the grass, and Yeah. It's, it's, it's important to look at the evidence, though. You guys see what I'm saying? Now look at that very, the very end. And what I like about the spreadsheet is you can actually just scroll to the very bottom, whatever the number to start, like round 10 or 11 or whatever the last round is, that just gets carried from whenever we stop. Because really, if we're looking at like change throughout the experiment, what two rounds do we need to look at? The, the one and the, one, the one and the last one, which would be what we would start round Six, yeah, the very end, because we did five rounds, right? Yeah, probably. So you could also look at the very bottom of round five. It says number left. Go ahead, scroll to round five. We should say, yeah, number of individuals in orange. Is that the same or different than the number that you'd start round six with? Yeah, it's the same. It just, it carries over. Number five, oh, I love number five. What's the selective pressure? What put pressure on the stick bugs that caused the change? Vomiting birds. Vomiting birds. We have a word for that. Not, not vomiting birds, but predator. Can we make that like an action instead of a thing? Pre predating? I dig it, predating. There's an actual word for it, but I'm keeping predating. <laughs> Predatorial actions. Whoa. Starts starts with a letter, ends with another letter. All right. Oh, I got this one unlocked. What's that? There are some letters in between. Hunting. Hunting could work. Feeding. I do like shouting feed and feeding. What, this is a tie-in from chapter two, what controls the expression of those different traits? It's one of the seven characteristics of life. What controls, let's, let's say these bugs were not actual toothpicks, but they're real like actual bugs. What controls the color? Like what inside the bug makes it be a tan bug or a yellow bug? Yeah, genes, we're talking, we're talking heredity, right? Yeah. Would that make sense? Like how you had more, like if you had more tan bugs, do you have more or less tan babies? Which is it? Probably more. I mean, that makes sense if you're passing down your trait, if they're, if they're real bugs. I know they're not real bugs, but just, just go with it, okay. There actually is a species of bug called the stick bug, and they do look remarkably like a stick, just not as much like a stick as an actual toothpick. Yeah. They're, they're yeah, different, they're different. So, so you're telling me the genes are, are controlling the trait. Yeah. And let's just say, to make it easy, I'll just say, let's say there's a tan gene, a yellow gene, a green gene, and a red gene. And let's just say they're all equal. I know last year you learned about like dominant and recessive genes. You learned it's a little more complicated. This year you're gonna learn that it's like way more complicated than you ever thought it could possibly be. But how about we save that for March? Does that sound good? Okay, so right now let's just say tan, yellow, green, red, let's say those genes are equal, okay? If you can measure, do you think you can measure the genes of the bugs if they are real bugs? You don't think that's the thing we can do in science? Look at the genes. We totally can. That's how like DNA fingerprinting works and the whodunit shows. You know that's not what it is. Well, it's in every cell of your body, so all we need are some cells with a nucleus. Usually, usually they go with the ones from the inside of your cheek because they're really easy to scrape off. Like, like literally, uh, go ahead, lick lick your cheek with your tongue. You just got cells from your cheek all over your tongue. So all they do, like, like, but not even hard. This one, they just take a swab and they just get in there. They don't even have to push hard. In non-rona times, we have a lab where we do that. I don't think we're gonna do it this year because gross. Yeah, all the time. And also a bunch of other stuff. 
and then you turn it into more you. So how fun. So what, you, what you're saying is you think if we had real bugs, we could measure like how many tan genes there are, how many yellow genes there are like in the whole group. How do you think the number of genes would change over the generations? Well, how, look at your data. What happened? Where's your, where's your, dude, where's your data? Yeah. Plug it in. Come on. You know, plug right here and stuff. Make it happen. Move that a little closer, Joe. Someone else, tell me. Tell me what would happen to the genes over the experiment. What would happen, Brady? The yellow and the genes would also probably be increasing as the population went up, as the population grew, but also as the red and green would also grew. So you're saying tan and yellow genes would go up, red and green genes would go down? What do you guys think about that? Agree, disagree? Team kill the tan? <laughs> that right there, when we look at how many of each gene, I'll tell you, that's a term. We have a word for that. It's called genetic variation. Now, was anyone able to make a color of stick bug totally go extinct? You guys wear what color? You got rid of green? Anybody get rid of red? You guys almost got rid of tan. So you know it's possible. So at the beginning, how much of each color did you have? 20 of each. 20 of each. Would you say that's an even amount of genes then, or do they have different amounts of like red, green, yellow, tan even. genes? Even. even. So we started with four different types, and then some groups ended with? Three different types. Third period, there are some teams killed off both tan or both red and green, ended with two. Either way, we started with four different types, we ended with three. Tell me about the variation over the course of the lab. Go up, down, stay the same. The variation. Went down. You had four, now you only have three. The variety you have less variety. And in fact, that other one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess, you probably didn't have too many of the, uh, the red ones, did you? We kept going, do you think you could have gotten rid of the red too? Most likely. Do you think, other than team kill the tan, do you think you ever could have rid the box of just tan? Like, you tried hard enough? Do you think you could eat all 80 tan in one 30 second round? Interesting. Well, yeah, if I dumped the whole box on the table and say I ate it, then I got everything. Maybe you could only get 20. 20? Yeah, but that'd be really hard. That would be really hard. You have to. You'd have to get really five, good. You have to level up your bird skills. Person. Five sticks per person? Yeah, that wouldn't be too bad. Especially if there's 80 in there. It should be easy to just, like, blindly get one, shouldn't it? No, there's, like, a thousand. There are a lot, a lot of plants in there. A lot of plants in there. I actually don't know how many. I just took a box and dumped it in. Should be 500-ish in each box. 500-ish, like flat ones. That's a weird thing to say just then. I want a gold-plated toilet seat and a Tesla, but it's not going to happen, is it? Actually, I don't want a Tesla. Heck, Tesla. Pole star for life. Yo, the uh, the Tesla Model X is actually the safest car you can buy because in the rollover oh. tests it never technically drove over. Subaru is the safest car supposedly. Technically, no car is the safest car, so there I can be on Reddit too. Final final one I want to talk about before before we go. Oh no, what was the thing? Oh, so we had we had four different types, then we have three, barely three different types. Would you, what, you know the word for what we're modeling already. You learned it in like fifth grade, fourth grade, seventh grade. Yes, what, is, what it? is it? Depending on what word you mean. What were we modeling? You extra know it because you've already done the homework. 
Well, evolution is, is, is what happened. What caused it? What? Natural selection, he says. Should be a pretty familiar concept at this point. Yeah. What happened? So we're, we're, we're showing natural selection. And remind me, what happened to the amount of variation? It went down. Anytime you hear the word selection, when you're selecting things, are you broadening or are you narrowing? Narrowing. narrowing. Are you going to have more types or less types if you're being really selective? Less. Do you see what I'm saying? The, word, the other words you're going to see a lot of are beneficial and detrimental. What's it mean if, a, if something's beneficial? It. It's good. And what's going to happen to it? You think you'll see it more? Anybody think you'll see it less if it's good? Only, only if it's an Apple product. So what's detrimental mean then? Bad ruins everything. Reddit. Yeah. Reddit. So if you have a detrimental trait, would you see that go up or down? Probably down. If you have a beneficial trait, would you see that go up or down? Up. You say up. If you have a beneficial gene, would you see that gene go up or down? Up. If you have a beneficial or a detrimental gene, would you see that go up or down? Yeah. Right. Do you guys see where this is going? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I know what these words mean. Nice. Yeah. De beneficial means good. Detrimental means bad. For example, zoning out in class, that would be detrimental to your grade. Paying attention in class would be beneficial to your grade. Look over your questions, all 10 of them. Open season right here, right now. What questions do you have over it? The 10 questions. What questions do you have? Oh, I like it. Which ones you're not sure of? You know, before I start writing quiz questions. Whoa. For the quiz, on, down, for the quiz on Friday. P.S. There, there's, a, there's a quiz on Friday in case you hadn't figured that out yet. You're going to start writing them because it's one or two. Oh, I'm going to write quiz questions tonight. I write them every night. I love quiz questions. No, play, no, play Minecraft. No, I don't play video games. I'm a grown up. Play Tetris. And Colin, oh, like Mortal 2. I do like Portal too. Yeah, that's funny. Although it's the only I hate puzzles, and that's the only one. Oh, I do the puzzles like speeder in the game. I've done it. <laughs> yeah, flip through walls The whole yeah, the I whole game is walls. puzzles. That's the no that's the whole point of the game to go through walls. I like the part where you go to the moon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, like I mean, you go through walls if you're in a portal, but yeah, yeah that's the whole point. The All right, listen, listen. What? Remind me, what is your homework? Um, well, the, the, you know, you know what it is, right? The, five, the, the, the thingy. The five mechanisms. Yeah, the five mechanisms of evolution. Yes. It's a, it's a video. I had someone say mechanic. Yeah, that was me. I five mechanisms. Riddle me this, Bat Youth. Should you watch the video just with it muted and reading the subtitles? No, because I can't read. Can you write, like, transcripts for the video? No. Because if I just wanted you to read some stuff, I would assign you a reading activity. I got a question for you. What's, what's important with the whole point of video is the audio and the video. The hearing is just as important as the seeing. You need to be able to hear the words coming out of Virtual Patterson's mouth while reading the words behind Virtual Patterson on the screen. You can't do that if you're also trying to read the subtitles that are over top of everything. Plus, we all know that YouTube doesn't know what I'm saying. What are you it, talking sometimes about? it sometimes does, but it usually doesn't. And again, if I wanted you to read something, I'd assign a reading. Here's an idea. With, uh, you learn better by hearing, watching, listening. You will learn it better by watching, listening. Crank up the volume, use those sweet headphones, find yourself a nice sequestered, quiet place. Maybe you need to go to the library during study hall, where you sort of sit in the corner, have the volume on super low, so just you can hear it. Who are you talking about? All of you. No. Because I was just doing that. Uh, because instead of that, I want you guys to go ahead. Listen, listen. Not only, sh not only do you need to turn in the focus questions, but you need to turn in a picture 
of your hand sketch. We have those both in, just like today, both of those in before class starts. Otherwise, cero puntos para ti. Yes. Zero points for you. Pour toi. I don't know the French word for points. Have you ever had anybody turn in the photo? Cero pour toi. Yeah, go ahead. Right there. You got the paper? Trace your hand. Go. Yeah, my pen's out of ink. I don't know how that happened. It was full like yesterday. Good. Probably. Hey, you guys now have a chance to get a jump start on your homework. Let's have it. <laughs> 